Welcome to Remote Daily. This is for Frank Weiss, how the CEO of the Hour Labs. What your mind thinking? It ain't thoughtless. Plus, you're switching up AI hybrid offense. So, check it out. Shout out to Felix and my boy Frank. No doubt. Today, we have someone who had executive roles at Yahoo, sold a startup to AOL, eventually became the CEO of Owl Labs, the first company to build AI powered. 360 degree video conferencing solutions. How cool is that? For hybrid environments like this one, including the award-winning Meeting Owl Pro Camera, which we are looking into right now, because this is a different Zoom call. This is not your average Zoom screen that you see and not the average menu on there. Please welcome the CEO of Frank. Such an honor. Welcome to yeah, the thank, thank you. Thank you, Felix. And thank you, Lisa. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Great way to spend a Friday. And what's what are, going on there? Yeah. And Lisa and I, we were both looking at this being like, wait a second, there's more Franks mm -hmm. than just you. That's right. Yeah. We're actually on a Zoom call, but the camera speaker microphone in the room that I'm in is Al Labs flagship product, which is called the Media Al Pro. So this is what it looks like right here. So it is a 360 degree camera speaker microphone. So it sits at the center of the table. It has no moving parts. And it essentially acts like the director of the in-room part of the meeting. So you can see up top that you have a full panoramic screen and panoramic view of everything that's going on in the room. Nothing worse than being on a call and not knowing that your boss is on the other side of the camera and you can't see that person or whoever might be in the room at the time. So this gives you that full perspective. And down below where you see me, we call that the stage. The owl uses audio and visual cues to determine who is speaking and it'll split that screen as many as three times. We'll go into a little bit on the demonstration side of it later on, but this is really the device that gives you that perspective as a remote participant, as though you're really having a conversation with me face-to-face, -face, as opposed to being a fly on the wall with the camera. Lisa, no more hiding our kid, I would say, with those cameras, right? No, no more hiding our junk, no more hiding our cannabis, no more hiding a lot of things. Because I was going to say, and we'll probably get into this later, this is great for like at the office, but in my house, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. You need that static view that you can control. That's for sure. Yeah. You do not want to see what's outside of this frame, but when you're at the office, this totally works. And it's amazing, Frank, that we have the chance to experience this with you. Hundreds of thousands of companies around the world, especially small and middle-sized companies are using this. I just was teaching a journalism school in Germany and guess what? There was an owl in the middle of the room. Frank, to understand your journey a little bit better, please take us into what made you land at Owl Labs. You have been in tech for um, a long time. You have more experience than most in this field. What made you become part of this, this company that has uh, a little nice owl in its center? Yeah, so I, I think this the story of my career has always been that of working in a hybrid way. Work for large companies like Yahoo for the better part of a decade. And when you look at where I was during that time, I started in New York, I moved to San Francisco, I moved to Boston, and then I moved back to work out of the San Francisco offices and commuted back and forth to Boston. So I've always been someone that has been on the other side of the call, which is the remote participant that's into a large room of people. And it made sense to me that there was a trend here that was very real. At some point, I'm going to be able to live in Montana and still compete for jobs in San Francisco, right? Because it, when you think about it, there's always been a little bit of a, a strange stigma around uh, being a remote employee, but finding the uh, most quality employee for a job is the most important thing you can do. It shouldn't matter where they live, as long as you can figure out how to make them productive. And that's where Al came into play. So I met the founders and I used the product. And then I went and looked at the reviews and I, you rarely see a piece of hardware that has so much love from its uh, users. And if you, I went onto Amazon and I spent a lot of time looking at what people had to say about the product. And the words love, game changer, different, more productive were in all of those reviews. And that was it. You can't be a great product. So I looked at all those factors and being a little bit of a tech geek myself with a mechanical engineering degree, I was excited to become a part of the company. 
And I have to say, when I saw this product the first time in the middle of the room, when you switch it on, there's an actual owl looking at you. So you managed to actually put an animal sort of emotion into this thing. And even owls are sort of crazy animals. They're not, we're not scared of them. So you actually look at this thing and you're like, oh, which Right. Somebody would never do it with an uh, Alexa, I guess, in in their room. But Lisa, sorry, I was I was interrupt. You believe that the world is not ready for like hybrid work. Do you still think this, or what do you think about like how we're preparing for? Is the world really ready for hybrid work? My core belief is not at all. Uh, like I said earlier, remote work was always a little bit of an afterthought. Hey, we hired a person to work remotely, and you never thought about remote being first. And you never thought about productivity for remote employees. And then in March of 2020, 1.4 billion knowledge workers all of a sudden started working in that environment where everyone is, you know, working from home, it's a democratized meeting and we're all the same. So if you look at the three of us right now, the only true difference is the backgrounds. I can see and hear both of you uh, just as clearly because we're all in our individual Zoom boxes. So that really worked kept everyone productive. Everyone is, feels like, you know, they've been as productive, if not more productive. But now employees have gotten a taste for being able to, you know, manage their schedules in a way where they might be able to have a balance as they start to go back to work. Yeah, back to the office. I say, I, I use those interchangeably. It's not, obviously, it's more about the return to office than it is return to work. However, what's going to happen is that democratized meeting is now going to change, right? Because instead of the three of us all being equal with our equal backgrounds, there might be a situation where the two of you are remote and then there's six people in this room. And now how are you going to be a part of that call? And how are you going to put yourself in a situation where you're contributing as much as you did before? I think there's a gap there. And when you look at the world and you look at the data, there's roughly 100 million conference rooms and huddle spaces worldwide. And less than 10% of those actually are wired to host a video call. And, and employees aren't going to want to race back to the office to sit in front of their, their computer and do Zoom calls all day. So, so there's a huge technology gap. And while we were forced to think about how to make it work when we all were forced into our homes, now that people are starting to come back, there's just an assumption that we're going to be able to maintain that same level, level of productivity. And I don't think we're prepared for all the obstacles that stand in the way. So Frank, totally going to put you on the spot here. We always ask our guests uh, coming to Remote Daily to ask a question to the audience, to, to, to tap the wisdom of the people in the room here with us, people, managers, consultants, entrepreneurs, um, about this new era in the workplace. So, Frank, just um, off the cuff, what are you curious about hearing from everyone in the room today? Yeah, we're all here on this call, and I think this is the way that the world is going to look for a little while. But I'm curious, as we think about the application of the metaverse in the office, like how, what are people's perspectives? Are they ready for the metaverse as it relates to how we're going to work together in the metaverse? Wow. Okay. That's a, that's Uh, a great question. (laughs) So how ready are you for the metaverse at work? Is that the question? Yeah. The the metaverse. Yeah. The the metaverse in the office. And everybody's perspective on, on the definition of the metaverse is different, but I think that there's a core belief that no matter where we both are, at some point in the future, we're going to, is it going to mean wearing headsets at home so that you can look around the room and really feel like you're a part of the room? Is it going to be this hologram world where we all feel like we're sitting at a table together? Those are some of the definitions that and, and examples that I've seen. And I'm just curious to see what people think. Wow. Thank you for chiming in here from Sabine, who has been living with it for decades, to uh, Kristen, who says, I'm not ready for this at all, especially if I have to put things on my head. What stands out to you, Frank, when you look at the the comments here in the chat from our community? Yeah, I think it, it's exactly what I would have expected. It's The answers are all over the board because I think the definitions right now are all over the board. So I think it's, it's, everybody's got a different level of knowledge and they have different assumptions about what it's going to be. And that therefore they have much different perspectives on whether or not they're ready for it. But let's let's like, stick to this for a second. And Lisa, oh, I guess you wanted to ask the same thing because I was wondering, like, how is this, how does this look like in your head, Frank, like the metaverse at work? Yeah. To me, it, it looks like a world where, you know, this meeting is, is makes you feel even closer to being in person when we're remote. That is what it looks like to me. 
there are, there's a, we're a long way from having this meeting on the Starship Enterprise and all feel like we're sitting on the Starship Enterprise, right? There's a lot of technology that's going to be needed now and that technology is going to evolve over time. But, I, you know, for me, it's less about the tactics of, are you going to wear glasses and look around the room? It's more about, are you going to really be able to feel like you are in a meeting the way you used to when everyone was in person? Every year we do this research report that's called the state of remote work. And in that, what you're finding is that there's still a place for the office, but there's still a really strong desire to have the flexibility to do a little bit of both, right? Mm -hmm. You have the edge over here that wants to go in the office every day. You have the edge over here that wants to work from home every day. But in the middle is, hey, I want to be able to create the flexibility to do either. And, and the technology is going to be needed in order for you to have that feel like you did in the past getting to know your colleagues, really feel like you're being heard and being a part of the conversation is going to be really important. We'll come to your state of remote work report in a second, but you and your team have amassed a lot of knowledge about what it means to lead in a hybrid environment. What's the skill set that old school leaders need to learn to connect and lead in this reality? What, what do you think? Yeah, for me, this comes down to what, we're a company that always believes that it's about the culture, It's about creating a culture of accountability. It's about making sure that people are able to productive no matter where they are. We've always had remote workers everywhere and we're not going to, you know, put out a memo that says you have 30 days to get back to the office and you have to be in there every single day. I think that the, the thing that I'll say, if you were to sit down with a leader that said, I need everybody back in the office tomorrow, I would ask them this question. Did you hire the people to do a job or did you hire them to watch them work? And I think it, the answer is crystal clear, right? You hired them to do a job. Does it matter if you get to sit there and look at them every day? And I think we need more sure people like you. We need more people like you yelling this from the mountaintops. <laughs> Keep doing your thank you for the work that you do, which is saying that to people. And yelling it into corner offices, I think. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would love to see that question asked of leaders that are, you know, mandating a return to office because it's just, it, it, it would be illogical to say that you hired them to watch them work. Yeah. because nobody's ever gonna <laughs> say that. And that'll be a big reckoning moment for them too. They'll realize they can't say it. And in that moment, they might realize, I think I just need to watch people work. <laughs> That's great. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And and I want to continue here just giving a, a brief uh, screen share from your state of remote work 2021. By the way, when is the 2022 version going to come out? Usually in the fall. So we in do the, the research over yeah the majority of the year and then we release it in the fall. Got it. So you beautifully visualized here some of your findings that you have done. What, when we look at this together, what is something from this report that that really surprised you? So I, I would say there there are Are, are two things that surprise me. One is that no matter what, the majority thinks that there's still a role for the office. Even if you want that flexibility, even if you are only going to planning on going into the office, let's say 20% of the time, there's still a role for the office, even though, again, employees want the flexibility and they demand the flexibility and they are going to leave their job if they don't have that flexibility. So there's another thing for the leaders that are mandating people being in the office, you're going to limit your pool of, you know, who's going to want to work for you. And then now I'm going to pile on to my metaverse question earlier. And that was really the biggest surprising thing for me, which was more than 50% of the employees that were part of the survey, and there were over 2,000 that were part of the survey, more than 50% of them actually said they were ready for it, that they would embrace it. And to me, that again, back to Lisa's point, which is, I liked certain things about the way the world operated before, but I don't want to go back to that, but I want to be able to have that feeling. And I think technology can play a role in there. In general, what I would say is that employees are willing to invest in technology. They're willing to invest in themselves and they're willing to invest to make a uh, hybrid and remote work. And they're expecting the same from their employers. Very interesting. And now we have, we heard this say you before, but when you actually think about this new environment that so strongly came out of the survey, right? There is this proximity bias. There is this team close to leadership back at the office versus team 
remote, team flexible, for whatever reason. And the trap of cheating on remote workers and promoting and supporting the ones that are closest to you. So riffing off of that first leadership question, what do you recommend for leaders to avoid that trap of proximity bias? I would leadership as we go to this hybrid state, leaders need to be thinking remote first and they're not going to, they've been thinking remote first while we were all displaced. And now that there's an office where people can come back to, they need to continue to think remote first. These think about it this way, when March of 2020 hit and everybody was dispersed, we changed the way we operated in some ways. So we, uh, we instituted a weekly all hands that's run every Thursday for the entire company. And so the purpose of that is to create transparency into how the business is performing and to educate on certain topics that may be important, maybe not even necessarily to the entire employee base, but it gives them the ability to be included in pieces and learn more about the company along the way, right? Now, think about if I were to come back and let's say all of a sudden tomorrow, 40% of the team is in person and 60% of the team is remote. If I'm meeting with that team that's in the office on a regular basis, that means the remote people are getting left out. So I always think remote first. Those things that you did during the pandemic to keep everybody together, to build that culture, to build those connections, don't lose sight of those. They need to continue. You might even have to enhance them going forward. Always be thinking about the person that is not in the room. I think is important. And then it is interesting. We just went through a promotion process here at OWL. And at the end of it, we looked at the data because I was really curious if, to see if more people that were coming into the office in the early days of hybrid were getting promoted more than those folks that were remote. And for us, it was about 50-50. And it's probably not a fair test at this point because so many people are still primarily remote. It's going to be really important going forward that if you have people that choose to be in the office every day, doesn't mean that the people they're more productive than the people are remote. But if they're in the face of leadership, if they're in the face of management every day, if they're getting promoted more often, then there's a bias. And those biases need to be out the window. We're in an age of inclusivity. So everybody needs to be thought of and our policies need to reflect that. And that's where, again, I don't believe that we're all prepared for this hybrid shift and, uh, and it needs to start at the top. So I, what I hear between the lines is almost a call for a quota. You can't, you have to kind of force that remote first environment, you have, might have to force that promotions are 50-50 now, uh, or even maybe towards the majority of people who are not at the office, because otherwise it's not going to work. As, Rafa, as Ra, uh, Rashad just put in the chat, there's tremendous resistance from top of the house. And I'll just say this really quickly from the top of the house people, most likely leaders who are at the top in companies are also low-key remote workers because they travel a lot and I think the idea of their own people doing that is just, oh, no, you're supposed to stay put. And I think it brings other people up to them up to their level and makes them uncomfortable. So I think along with the proximity bias, there's a lot of inclusivity talks that need to happen at that level of, no, I get to fly wherever and work wherever, but you stay in your office. Right. That's such a that's such a big topic. In the end, it's a power game. And Frank, I have to say what you have developed as technology and that I just got to use without planning. So last week over there in Europe, it takes a part of this problem and is helping it. And you have now over 100,000 organizations who work with this thing. Uh, you told us in a prep call for some of the bigger corporations, it's very hard for you to get in because it requires their systems, their cybersecurity, their, their compliance, everything to work around the technology. But a lot of smaller and medium-sized businesses who are more flexible have already an owl in their midst. So just for us to understand why we have, where we're looking at this Zoom setup that you have right now here, would you mind showing to us just live on the call right now, what the magic of the camera act? There's no greater pressure than a live demo. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited to take the heat and, and do this live, but yeah. So what you'll notice is that, as I said, you have a 360 degree panoramic strip up top. And uh, I actually have the ability to remove that if I wanted to. And then, you know, what you can, if I were to get into a world before OWL really quickly, this is what that, that world might look like, right? Where you have just a camera that's sitting on the top of the screen. And so if I were to get up, 
and I were to walk over here in the old world, now all of a sudden you don't see me. It changes your perspective. What if I'm having a conversation? What if I'm showing something that you're not able to see? So that's that static world that exists. And Al gets you out of that static world and into a position where I turn on the panoramic strip. And now all of a sudden I see what's happening uh, in the entire room, which we think is an important piece of it. And then I'm going to take you, I currently have you unlocked. And what you'll see is now, this is a much better demo when there's people in the room because the owl is a conference room and a classroom product when there are people. So I'm going to try to be multiple people right now. That's great. It's hard to do. But what happens, what happens is that it, the owl looks for active speakers. So now it, it sees me, it knows I'm here, it knows I'm an active speaker and it senses that I'm participating. So it's focused on me. If there were someone else here, what? stay over here. Now it's also going to go ahead and find me and it's going to split the screen and it will be showing both people. And eventually the other place where I was is going to disappear. It's not going to disappear at an instant because if I were to start speaking again as a remote participant, you wouldn't want that kind of ping pong happening too fast. Because I'm uh, assuming but, the other person is still there. Now it is. Yeah. And then after there's no participation in that space, you'll see then it'll disappear and just focus on me. It's really effective in a world where there's multiple people in the room and you as the remote person are, are really trying to be a part of the conversation and it sits at the center of the table. So it, it literally, it makes you feel like you're in the center uh, of the action. So I'm going to give you one more, what we tried to solve for. And again, I know this is not an Al Labs commercial. I don't want it to be, but what you need to think about solving for is Employees on the remote side, uh, can I see, can I hear, right? Those are two important things. If I can't do that, there's no meeting, there's no effectiveness. And then the next one is the owl uses uh, technology that puts us in a position where if I happen to be walking around the room and I'm going to, maybe this is the lecture hall, or perhaps we're running at all of the ends. The other mode that it was in is when there's multiple active speakers. If there's a presenter, the owl will actually the technology will is smart enough to learn that I'm moving around and it's going to follow me around with that. And then I'm going to show you this last cool demo. You'll see these tags that I have up here on the whiteboard and across the whiteboard for me is one of our newer products. It's called the meeting at the whiteboard owl. And it allows the remote employee to get involved in the collaboration. Because if I started writing on this whiteboard right now, what you can see is uh, a lot of glare. You probably wouldn't see images accurately. And so what the whiteboard owl does is that it takes the stage and you actually see a high definition image of the whiteboard. And now you can see that I'm actually transparent. So if I'm writing on the whiteboard, uh, you can actually see it without me in a way. I'm just going to say happy bro. This is cool. Hope that I spell it accurately while I'm uh, thinking about how the rest of the demo is going to go. So yeah, owls solving. A lot of problems for the conference room and for the remote employee. We've always thought remote first, and therefore that's what our that's what our products are here to solve. Lisa, what do you think? That is really cool. I have a thousand questions, but I'll maybe just say a couple. One, that's cool. Two, when the camera was stagnant on you, you were still, but the background was still moving. Was that just me? No, that was because if I was the in the in that presenter mode, it it's following me around. So my movements were causing the camera to move, but that's mm -hmm. not the normal mode. That's just if you're going to be using it with it a, kind of with feels a like an it feels like an optical illusion. Yeah. I just dread the day content creators get their hands on this. Yeah. I'm gonna say keep it away from them for for a while. I won't be able to take it. <laughs> you know, and, and, and just one other thing that I'll add is that, you know, the hardware is great, but it's the software that runs the device, right? So this is actually Wi-Fi connected. So it gets smarter over time because we're constantly doing software releases to it and it updates over the air so that as new features arrive, we have the opportunity to make meetings better and more inclusive and uh, make the remote participant far more productive. And so uh, it's sensor is sensor based. Right. That's okay. And, and let's just put a, an important question in the chat because I was trying this technology last week and Yvonne just put, just said, seems like a great application for schools in hybrid mode. Yvonne, I fully agree. But Liz is asking, what do the remote employees actually look like in this scenario? And last week I was in an owl and there were people in a Google Meet. So we had a setup like this one. 
But is there different setups as well? Does OWL think into how remote employees show up in the room when there is an OWL as a physical solution? So right now, they, it, it's actually, we're running a Zoom right now. So right. OWL Labs is a company that is agnostic to the video conferencing platform that you use. So okay. Zoom is actually making these decisions on the boxes that are in the room. Not to say that will always be the, the case to tease out some of the uh, technology for the future. But wherever the OWL is, the OWL is making decisions on how to present the room. And that goes through Zoom. So it's a USP, USB pluggable device. So you just plug it into your computer. And if you're running a Zoom off your computer, you choose the meeting OWL as the camera, speaker, microphone. So it just depends on the platform that you're using. This is your virtual camera. And that the remote employees will still be in their in their respective boxes. But as you just said, new stuff is coming out all the time and it affects workplaces. So do you have a favorite new virtual world? Is there like, are you in the sandbox or the Roblox or Decentraland or whatever? Are you already in there checking out how OWL is gonna live in the metaverse? Or where are you looking at when you think about the next step for OWL? Yeah. So what I mean, I think about the next step is that there is a lot of technology that needs to be built and delivered over these next several years. And I think there, there are going to be steps along the way. So right now, our goal is to take this, you know, incredible set of products and this incredible franchise, continue to evolve it, evolve the software on how it works, evolve the video quality and the audio quality and some of the other, bringing some of the other pieces to the room for how that happens. There's a lot of applications where owls are used right now. So it is primarily a conference room product. It works incredibly and effectively well in a classroom environment as well. During the pandemic, there were so many great applications where we got outside of the conference room. And so a great example is there was a hospital where the NICU couldn't have visitors. And so they bought, uh, we actually donated owls so that the owls could be at the NICU so that you can have a really good view uh, of the children in the NICU for those that couldn't come into the hospital during the pandemic. We're looking at those situations and constantly evolving the effectiveness of it. And then I think the other thing I really like that I've learned platforms that I've worked with that I think are really interesting is the event space. So whether it be Verizon Blue Jeans has an event space, whether it be Hop In or some of those other ones, I think there's a really good opportunity to make that virtual event better so that you don't have to spend 10 hours traveling to an event. Fascinating. And of course, it's amazing to hear that just like Zoom became a new medium and you out of a sudden had weddings, funerals, family visits, birthdays, anniversaries happening on Zoom, you now have a technical device that allows people to participate in an entirely different way. I have seen one is issue when we were in a classroom, the students were pretty close together. And sometimes the owl just didn't know where to go because when different people were talking, and I imagine this being a, a great challenge when you think about audio sensors, if there's a dense room with people to make the, the, the device decide all the time where to switch next. Is that your major challenge you're working on right now? Or what is this? You call that a major challenge, but what I would say is that's the beauty of the hardware being, the hardware is great, but the software drives it. So you're always making those decisions on how to present the room, when to make the decision that background noise isn't a person or background noise isn't a, a presentable speaker at that time. We're always evolving the software to put ourselves in the best position to be effective. And, and there's other pieces that we're working on as well, which I think is really cool is now you can network multiple together. So if you have a very large conference room or you have a very large lecture hall, you don't have to huddle around the camera. You could be in different areas and the owl makes the decision when to show an individual, whether they happen to be closer to this owl versus that owl, or whether their head position is focused on closer to that owl. So it's going to give you that real face front face view and will make those decisions as well. That's what we really appreciate the opportunity to be able to do, which is just continue to evolve it so that the experience becomes better and better. How does it feel to be so when the pandemic happened, Zoom probably went from and this is, these are, of course, not the real numbers. This is where I lean on my comedic side. But they went from like a dollar in revenue to like $58,417 trillion in revenue. How does it feel to be on the precipice of that and having a piece of technology that is 
being added to this world that could have a big boom because this is where we are right now? Like, how does, was that intentional to be like, I'm going to go into this space? Did, or We've been here. Yeah, we were founded in 2014 and we launched our first product in 2017. We were riding the wave of remote, which obviously was headed in this direction. And then all of a sudden it took a sharp turn and went directly upwards. We've, we have seen significant demand for our product across all types of companies, whether they be Fortune 100, small and medium-sized companies or other, but we, we also had a lot of essential businesses that needed to figure out how to communicate. We also had schools that needed to figure out how to stay online. But you're right. We have not seen this kind of gap being closed on those 100 million conference rooms and huddle spaces that we talked about earlier that will be happening, we, we believe, over the next, call it two to five years as we perfect the art of having some employees at home and some employees in the Frank Weishaupt, the CEO of Owl Labs and a true tech pioneer and trailblazer on remote daily today. If you want to know more about Owl Labs, we have put a lot of links for you in the chat. The remote work report, Kristen provided the even the medical paper uh, that came out that Frank just talked about. We have recent press and of course the website, the LinkedIn for y'all to connect. Is Owl Labs hiring, Frank? We are hiring all over the world. All right. You can also find that on our website. Fantastic. That is Remote Daily for today. But now, Frank, last question, last seconds are always for our guests. What is something you want to share? What is your final message for this community? Can be a personal mantra, can be an announcement. The mic is yours. Yeah, so you see, it's great to just talk to so many people that are interested in the topic, and we are excited to experience this next version of how we figure out how to work together into the future. And we're we're always looking for people to help participate with us, and all our information is available on allabs.com, and uh, we hope to hear from you. Thank you so much, Frank Weishaupt. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.